Hello, I am Hebo. In the near future, you and I are going to be very good friends. Want to talk about it? Here is my friend, Michael Holmes. Thanks very much, Hubo. Well, have you ever wondered what your life is going to be like in the future? How robots and technology and medical miracles are going to change the way we all live? I'm Michael Holmes, here at the Esplanade in Singapore for CNN Future Summit of Man and Machine. Let's go meet both. Hello again and welcome to CNN's Future Summit of Man and Machine. Now over the course of the next hour or so we're going to be looking at the amazing ways that science and technology are going to change our lives with our friend here and we've got some other friends too. We're going to be talking about robots with Jun Ho Oh, the man who created our friend Hubo. Also with robotic psychiatrist Joanne Pransky about how robots are going to be part of all of our lives. We're going to talk about the future of stem cell research. That'll be with Dr. Alan Coleman. You may remember one of the men who helped clone Dolly the sheep. We're also going to be talking to Jay Kiesling about how advanced genetics is changing life as we know it. Now, in addition, we've asked along anthropologist Daniela Serki to help put all of this into some sort of perspective, how all of this is going to affect our lives families and societies, really, whether you like it or not. Let's begin now with our look at the future with my friend Hubo here. Robots have a long way to go before they match their image on the movie screen. No offence to Hubo. But Hubo and his cousins are quickly catching up. Right now, robots can do some useful but not particularly complex things like vacuum the floor, work an assembly line, and walk and talk a little. But like the infants that they are, they're going to grow, develop new skills, and surprise us with their dexterity. I think in the next 30 years, we're going to see a transformation between the industrial sorts of robots to personal robots. What is a personal robot? An assistant, a colleague, companion? In 20 or 30 years time, I expect we will see robots much more in the presence of human beings than they are currently. Some in the industry feel we'll reach a point when life without robots is unimaginable. The same way we regard computers and cell phones now. I've no doubt that in 20, 25 years from now we'll have a lot of humanoid robots running around among us. And of course we can't resist making machines in our own image. Like Repli, short for replicant, modelled after a Japanese news anchor. In an experiment, 70% of people who glimpsed Repli for just two seconds believed she was human. Even our friend Hubo has a twin, Albert. Look familiar? And why shouldn't robots imitate us? After all, we are perfect, aren't we? If we're going to start seeing robots running around with uh, personalities equivalent to human beings in, say, 15, 20 years' time, it's about time we started thinking about that now. Bye-bye. 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 All right, we want to bring now uh, Professor Jun Ho Oh, who really is the man behind our friend Hubo here, and uh, thanks for bringing him along all the way from right. Korea. First of all, what makes him so special? Uh, give us an idea of what he can do. Okay, the, he is a humanoid robot. Humanoid robot means it looks like a human, he moves like a human. So he looks a simple, it highs about 120 centimeters, it weighs under 60 kilograms, but in it there are so many sophisticated things included, like has 41 motors to move all the 41 actually joint, and the uh, reduction gears, computers, batteries, even communications, and intelligence. So through that, he can see the world, he can hear, and he can speak, even he can understand some verbal comment. Oh, like what? Like what? <laughs> okay, I will show you the... Uh, may I ask uh, Hubo to greet the guests? Uh, Hubo... Hi there, who now watching the CNN. My name is Hubo. 
and he's very polite. <laughs> yeah, very polite. He's Korean way to yes. make big bow. So what, what, else, <laughs> what else can he do? Movement? Yeah, I'll ask him to the, uh, give you a, give a hand to you to oh, make okay. a handshake. Hubo, would you try to give a handshake mm. for the yes. uh, Michael? Ready to give a handshake. Okay, gently move and up and down. Okay, so oh, and it's just follow. Yeah, right, following exactly. Line, right. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, thank you. Dylan. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> and the, uh, I would like to show you that how can he stabilize himself with single leg. So the uh, Hubo will stand with the single leg. I'll show you. Hubo, would you do that? Okay, see? Now, th that's a difficult thing for me to do. I, I, think that I don't believe you can, can do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks very simple, but he's very busy inside. He's measuring his orientation and rate, uh, speed of rate and the uh, force against the floor and keep balance all the time by calculation. And also, the, uh, he can stabilize himself by two legs. I'll show you. It's very interesting. Okay, and now he's in very uh, comfortable rest position. But if I apply the force like this way, looks well, he could very, fall over. Yeah, fall over. Yeah, right. Looks very fragile mm -hmm. and very weak. The reason is that I turn off the control. If I ask him to turn on the control, then the situation will be changed drastically. I will apply same force as you see. Okay, it's very, become very stabilized, and if I move back and forth, he's it's resisting. Going to and he's right. If I push him, and, and then he, he will push me back again to keep his own balance. There's a lot going on yeah, inside right. here. Yeah, right. we, we should point out, it's important to point out that he's not doing this on his own. He doesn't yet have a brain. Right. Uh, there, our friends over there, your colleagues, are, are working on computers to, to help with this. Now, uh, we did, however, uh, program him a little earlier and, right. and he will understand yes. what I say to him. I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. Uh, Hubo, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am the humanoid robot developed <laughs> by Keist, Hubo Lab, in Korea. All right, and uh, why are you here in Singapore? I came here to show you how near the future is. When human beings and my free aims, the robots, can hang around. Very oh. impressive. <laughs> okay, Hubo, thanks very much for that. Do stick around for the rest of the program. I want to bring in now Joanne Pransky, who is, uh, you've probably never heard of this, a robotic psychiatrist. Mm. Now, I, I want to ask you just briefly, what do you think that robots are going to bring to our lives, our, our societies? I think they'll be our best friends, our companions. I can't wait for Hubo to be a, a nanny and to help us in, in everything that we do to um, be a nurse spot to us and possibly take care of, care of us when we're old and, and with his unique individual fingers to carry us to a bathtub and all sorts of relationships will develop with Hubo. All right, that's going to be interesting, but there, there may be some things to consider too, perhaps some negatives. When we come back after the break, in, in coming decades, what is it going to be like to live in a world filled with robots like Hubo, but these robots may be smarter, more capable than their creators? We're going to talk about the implications of all of that when CNN Future Summit continues. Do stay with us. I think, I think in the end, I think you're right. There, there is, 